This is a typical example of a question that makes students hate maths and uh, I don't blame them because very few people get it actually right because they do not understand how to how to solve this. There's a few things to keep in mind. One thing is that the first thing I must look at is whether I've got terms or factors. Here I can see I have no pluses and minuses between my bases. Therefore everything is being multiplied. That is the easiest one of these lots, is when everything is multiplied then it's fine. Then I can use normal exponential laws to solve this. And what are the exponential laws that I am going to use? Okay, so um, we have that when bases are the same, then we can, and we're multiplying, then we can add the exponents. So x plus y. And if bases are the same, then and we're dividing then we can subtract exponents so a times y m to the power y minus x those are the two major ones that we are going to use but there's one more that is a very very sneaky one and that is that when I've got the same expo this the, the uh, different bases so let's call it a and c but the same exponent then I can multiply the bases, but I do nothing to the exponent. So I can say uh, multiply the bases whoop, A and C and give them a common exponent, the common exponent that they already have. And you actually know it the other way around, is that, uh, that I can actually write this as A to the power B times C to the power B you kind of distributing the exponent which is exactly what it is but that is not okay uh, well uh, it is okay the, the problem is we are actually going to use this in reverse as well sometimes okay so let's see how can we use these three laws to answer this question well the reason why we need them is because the first step you have to do is uh, convert all bases to prime factors. Convert all bases to prime factors and the reason why is because you want to get similar or same bases and if you divide things to prime factors you're gonna get some that are the same. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead with that immediately. So 6 can be written as 2 times 3 but do remember that I can't go put a x plus 1 there now because that means only x only the 3 gets the gets the x plus 1 no no okay if you recall this one that is 2 and 3 because that makes 6 to the power of b which means I must actually distribute them distribute the b so the so this one I'm going to put in brackets I'm replacing 6 so put it in brackets 4 I can write as 2 times 2 or 2 squared now since I'm replacing keep it in brackets that's just a good practice it will help you not make silly mistakes times 3 to the power x minus 2 okay and the denominator we have 12 12 can be written as 4 times 3 but 4 can be 2 squared 2 squared times 3 x plus 1 and then 2 is already a prime number or prime factor by itself and 3 as well x minus 1 okay now let's just go and include another step where we get rid of all the brackets let's get rid of all the brackets here I must uh, distribute the exponent 2x plus 1 3x plus 1 times 2 there I multiply I've got an exponent with an exponent or a power with an exponent so I multiply the exponent so it's 2x minus 2 remember the negative 1 also gets multiplied times 3x minus 2 here we go in the denominator we are distributing so the 2's exponent gets multiplied with the x plus 1 so I get 2x plus 
2 times 3x plus 1 times 2x times 3x minus 1. There we go. And now, when it's here, when we get here, it's as, as simple as, uh, as it can be, okay? Because now, all of the same bases that are multiplied, I'll add their exponent, and all of the same bases that are divided, I'll subtract their exponents. So you've got different ways of doing it. You can, I'm going to do it first numerator and denominator, then, then combine it. So I'm first going to take two at the top. Okay, two at the top, I've got an x. That two is multiplied with that two, same basis, so I'm going to add the exponents. So I've got an x here and two x's there, so I've got three x's in the numerator. I've got a plus 1 here and a minus 2 there, so I'm going to get a negative 1. Now let's look at 3. 3 has a base and 3 is the same base. I'm multiplying, so that means I'm going to add exponents. I've got an x and an x, so I've got 2x. I've got a plus 1 and I've got a minus 2, so I'm going to get a minus 1. Okay, negative 1. Not so bad. Let's look at the denominator now. The denominator, I've got a 2. You know what, it's actually better if I keep the same color. I've got a 2 and a 2 there. Multiplying um, both in the denominator. Uh, so when I multiply them to each other, I'm going to add the exponent. So I've got 2 to the power 3x. And that plus 2, and this one has nothing, so plus and then I've got 3. There's a 3 and there's a 3. They're being multiplied, so I can add the exponents. A x plus x is 2x. A plus 1 and a minus 1 is 0. So those two are going to add up to 0. And there we go. Now we can use our second law, which says that if I divide bases, I subtract exponents. So let's look at 2. Two. There's my 2 and there's my 2. So I take, I subtract the denominator's exponent from the numerator. So I take 3x minus that 3x. Gives me 0. Okay. Negative 1 minus positive 2 gives me negative 1, negative 2. So negative 3 times. Now for 3, I get... 2x minus 2x gives me 0. And negative 1 minus 0 is just negative 1. Which, if I continue in here, I get that I get 2 to the power negative 3, which means 1 is w the thing that is in front, gets divided by 2 for 3 times and also divided by 3 once. And now I'm just going to simplify that. 2 to the power 3 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So there's my answer. And this is why I love, love maths. Because this thing that intimidated me, I reduced to a mere 1 divided by 24 in your face. Cool. Hope you guys are going to manage doing some on your own. Go try it. Have fun.